Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Elevate Your Life podcast. I'm here. I'm Paul Croto, and I'm here with Cheryl Morley. Hi there. Oh, my gosh. I am excited today. I am too, Cheryl. So today's Leadership Day, so we're, we're helping people elevate their leadership. And we've been going through a book by John Maxwell called The 15 Laws of Growth, which I'm, I wish this was the first book I ever read in my life because it actually teaches you how to grow. So I've been doing all this personal growth for 25 years. Really wish that I knew all these laws before I did all this because uh, now everything <laughs> makes sense. Uh, it is helpful. It is really helpful, yeah. So this is, this is the ultimate book. I really, if you haven't purchased this book yet, I highly recommend getting it. Um, and today, Cheryl, we're going to talk about the law of curiosity, which, which I love. I absolutely love this. I just got done, as, as I mentioned before, with, uh, with Tony Robbins, with Date With Destiny, and we were talking about like the best emotions for people to have. And one of the top emotions to have is, is being curious. Wasn't that in that book too? What, what book was that that had the, like those five strengths? One, one was zest and- Yeah, one was curiosity. Curiosity. I thought so. Yeah. You remember the name well, of that book? It's so funny. No, I don't remember what it was. Um, the Five Strengths or something? I can't remember. We'll figure it but, out. We'll post it in the notes. Yeah, but the thing I think is really interesting is, is everyone refers to be like a child, right? Be like a child. Be curious. Be, you know, in, in some different, um, you know, like be kind. Be, you know, there's different things that kids are just naturally and so as we, but as we grow up, we kind of lose some of those things, I guess, right? As uh, life hits us in uh, 50 different directions. But being curious is so fascinating to me because I do think it's easy to lose that. I really do. And just kind of, you know, live your life in a, in a fine way instead of a fabulous way. Now, which one of your, mm -hmm. your children do you think is more curious, uh, Justice or Angelica? Um, I think that justice is more curious naturally and like in a way like, oh, well, why, why? So he always asks yeah. why about everything. And mm -hmm. let me tell you, there's no, there is no kid I've ever met in my entire life. And I've been around a lot of kids who can ask better questions than justice. And I always get that as a compliment. Um, he's so engaging He's so interested in me. I mean, he talked to a bartender at my sister's wedding for like 15 minutes. And really he's taught me to ask good questions. I'm not even kidding you. He's so, and, I, and I'm like, Justice, that's so awesome. And he said, well, I'm just so interested in people's lives. And he's so good at asking those questions. Now, Angelica is very um, calculated. So she's, you know, she's very calculated in, when she's interested in something, she'll do some deep research on the subject. So right? she's got and curiosity very, too. Oh, absolutely. They both yeah. do. They both do. Yeah. You think you, you growing up, you had a lot of curiosity or were you, there wasn't one of your things that you would. Um, yeah, I do think that I was curious. I never wanted to go to sleep. Right. Cause I always felt like I would miss something. That is really true. That is something that someone that people have always told me. You never wanted to go to sleep, Cheryl. You were up all the time. And I would go to bed really late and get up really early because my goodness, I was going to miss something. So I do remember that being one of the things um, of when I was young. Very cool. Very cool. That's uh, I yeah. know I was super curious about everything and still am today. So I just thought it yes, comes, you are. it's everybody's like that though. I, you know, but I guess they're not because we wouldn't have a lot of but curiosity. But I think we lose it. Right. I think we lose it because I think all kids are very curious and, you know, into things and and, you know, climbing up on things and getting into everything. And we always you know, you always see things like that and we talk about stuff like that. But I really do think that as we get older, we lose it. Well, right? we get so in, like, let's let's hold that thought for one second, because I think I, I we, we can dive into that a little bit more in a second here. First of all, there's a great quote by Socrates that John goes over in this chapter that wonder is the beginning of wisdom. So I, I love that, you know, so that's, that's how you gain wisdom is you start having this curiosity and wondering why it exists, why that, well, why that? Uh, but the next point, Cheryl, on, on notes here is that curiosity tells you that you're missing something. So going back to your point on why, maybe why some adults um, lose their curiosity or choose to push it away is because it 
tells you that you're missing something. And most people don't want to know they're missing something. <laughs> right? So many people have FOMO, right? Fear of missing out. I mean, that's really a thing. And so, and, and so I think that um, you start feeling that way or you start really realizing that you're feeling that way as you get older. Yeah. I mean, it goes with the Institute of Holistic Health. We, we tell people all the time about their health and, and the nutrients they need. And there's 90 essential nutrients, you know, so it's your, your curiosity be like, I wonder which one I'm missing. Most people don't want to know that because they're missing probably 87 of them, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, uh, that's just one example. But I think people are missing a lot of things in their life, but they just kind of tune it out because they don't want to deal with it. Right. Or they may not even know. Right. They made it. They may have never have heard of that before. Gosh, sure. I'm missing. We need 90 essential nutrients. What are you talking about? You know, and then and then having that curiosity, though, is what will make the difference. Yeah, absolutely. I love the next point here. Cheryl says some people look at things as they are and ask why. Why the heck is that? Other people look at things as they could be and ask why not? I love that. <laughs> why not you a, Cheryl ask a why not that's right I want to be a ask why not type of person <laughs> well you are that, that's what makes you so wonderful yeah. yeah so John goes here and goes into his chapter the power of asking questions which I absolutely love um and Tony Robbins number one quote is where focus goes energy flows so the mm -hmm. million dollar question is well where the heck does focus come from like where do we people are like I don't have focus well, focus comes from questions. So it's super, super important to figure out what's the best questions to ask yourself. And I know, Cheryl, we taught mm -hmm. on Mondays about how our brain works like Google. When you type something in, it's going to search for, you know, like, why am I so fat? Well, let's do a search on that. Oh, it's because this, 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 and this. It goes in your, in your history and pulls up like 300,000 things, reasons why you're fat. Right. But if you ask your, yourself, why am I so thin? Well, you can get a whole new set of answers from that. Well, because you're, you have self-discipline, you have this, you have this, you're, you, and you can, you can find those points. Now we're talking about the same person asking two different questions and, and literally getting, you, your, your mind will answer both of them and find reasons to back up either statement. Right. So it's, it's really important. You know, we'll go into this. This is a whole other uh, podcast, the uh, questions we ask ourselves, but that is uh, it's a huge, huge topic and, and, and definitely controls our focus and brings out this curiosity. Right. Well, and I think that thoughts, it, just what you were saying just there, Paul, it really reminded me that thoughts really matter, right? right. And you can really decide the thoughts that you're going to have and I think that will make all the difference in, you know, how successful you are at, um, at living the life that you want to live. Yeah. Yep. It's, it's, um, it is, it's the, you, the question is how do we control our thoughts? You know, and it's, we have all these thoughts that are coming and the thoughts are coming from some sort of question you're asking yourself. So yeah. you change the question, you change the thoughts is what, is what the, uh, the idea mm -hmm. there behind that is. So. So I love this next part, Cheryl. It says, assume everyone you talk to knows something that you don't. Yeah, I love that. And it's so interesting. So I have a little story about this or know something that you don't or has the story or, you know, why they are. So I was at a class yesterday and um, the girl was awesome and really fantastic. And so we were just kind of chatting about it. And then my other friend told me a little bit about her backstory and she owns the place um, at the, you know, the, the workout place. And it was just fascinating. You know, you just don't know what people have gone through, what they're going through. Um, and so really to be able to ask those questions and find out the things about them, it gives you a whole, I don't know, for me, I just think that it gives you a whole new level of empathy, right? Of empathy and of understanding, I guess, which I think is so important. Absolutely. Now, Cheryl, the next point is, is uh, kind of interesting to me. It, it says, if you only want to live a surface life, don't ask any questions. And I know um, you've changed over the past four or five years. 
Um, but I, but I, one of the, the biggest changes I see in you is that five, six years ago, you didn't want to ask the questions, you know, like, what, like, why is that? Why is that? Or cause, cause I, I'm the kind of person that loves to get out a shovel and start digging. Like let's, let's dig and let's ask some questions. Let's go find the root cause of things. Cause I'm all about the root cause of things, but mm -hmm. for a lot of people that's painful. You know, I know it was painful for you sure. to go ask why, why, well, why, why did that happen? Well, what, what caused that? And to keep on digging like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's not, that's not something that comes easy to me at all. Well, it's like, not fun. Yeah. Because it's I, no, it's not fun. <laughs> well, <there we> go. <laughs> I love fun. So, um, no, it's not fun. And, and one of the questions that I had, like my whole life um, to myself was, um, why do some people have confidence and others don't? And that was always really a, a hard subject for me because I never had any confidence or I never felt like I had any confidence until I was much older, right? Until I was like in my thirties. And my daughter has just as much, much confidence as I have now. Um, then I had, you know, when I was, I never got that until I was in my thirties and my daughter just turned 14. So it's so fascinating to me. That's kind of been this lifelong journey of, are you just born with confidence or do you have to, how do you gain confidence? What do you do to get confidence and how can we help young girls as they're, you know, um, steering their way through this crazy life? How do we help them and instill confidence in them? And Paul, thank goodness, um, you may or may not be born with it. I don't know, but you can certainly, you know, attain confidence in yourself. And and I'm and I was so excited, you know, to hear about that because it really gave me hope. Yeah, absolutely. And we're gonna do a whole masterclass. We Cheryl and I have both dove into this topic of self confidence, and we're gonna be teaching a masterclass coming up. Um, just on this one topic of how do you gain self-confidence and, and where does that come from? So, and it is, it, yes. it, you know, and all the things, Cheryl, that you have kind of thought that you're just like born with, it turns out that no one's born with anything. I mean, no one's born a leader <laughs> or born, you know, a, a, a good at this or good at that, that everything has been learned, you know, and, and, and a program has been developed inside each of us over the years. So it's just, uh, it can absolutely be changed and, um, and we'll teach you how. So my curiosity question that I've been asking since I was like two years old is why do people do what they do? Like I'm, I see someone do something. I'm like, well, why did he do that? Or why did she do that? And like, I'm, I'm always, and I, and I was thinking there was some kind of simple answer for the longest time. And then when I really researched this topic and spent years on it, it, um, it was amazing how many factors go into why we do what we do. Um, so we'll, we'll go into that. Actually, I'm writing a whole book on that right now, but, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's complex and it's, you know, there's, but again, there's, there's these surface answers that, um, people turn to, you know, like for instance, like there's people like Oprah that come from less than nothing. I mean, the worst possible situation you could ever imagine a person growing up in, and then has built this normal brand, enormous brand. I mean, she's one of the most famous people on the planet. But then other people have much more in their life, better situation going on, but they just live ordinary lives. You don't even know who they are. So right. that just all that just fascinates me. Makes me why why do some people become really successful and other people don't? You know, oh, it's because of the way they're born. No, it's not. Because I would argue to say that people, I mean, you had a super rough childhood, and um, you know, you come out amazing. You know, so I, I, I see more than not the amazing stories, like the really standout stories like yours coming from super hard beginnings. Maybe there's something to that where you had to overcome more obstacles and that's why you were so successful. Well, it certainly makes you stronger, right? I mean, all of the things that Oprah went through, it made her much, much stronger. And so I think that that has a lot to do with it too. Yeah, yeah. The next part is super great. It's uh, imagination creates options. And Cheryl, I know you like options. <laughs> <laughs> options and freedom, which they might be. Well, that's the know, same thing. Yeah. Holding hands. Yes, exactly. Yes. No options, no freedom. That's exactly right. And I love, I love uh, this, this concept of having options in that 
when you when you realize that you always have an option, like I I always stop people whenever whoever's around me, they say, well, I have to blank. Uh, 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 don't ever, ever say I have to in front of me because there's options. You could not do that. You're like, what are you talking about? I have to do that. Nope, nope. You could do this, you could do this. And I always make them come up with three. Now you may choose to do that for a variety of reasons, but always keep keep in mind that there's options. And, and that is where the imagination comes in thinking. And I love, you know, Tony Robbins and John Maxwell, they both say the same thing. I never make a decision unless I have three options on the table. So I've adopted yeah. that in my life. Like I won't buy anything until I get like three quotes from something, you know, or mm -hmm. I won't hire anybody unless I, you know, interview three people. I'm not, I'm never going to, you know, interview one and say, oh, you're the person. It's always going to be, you know, and, and just taking on that mentality in life is just going to serve you really, really well. Um, cause there's always one more, one more than one way to do this. Yeah. Creativity also like gives it. us more it's, solution, Cheryl. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, and I think it's all about the way I say it. So I say it a little bit differently, but it's the same thing. You always have a choice. Mm -hmm. You yeah. always have a choice. Right. And I love this whole idea about, um, creativity because, you know, I don't think I, whenever I think of creativity, I think of a, of a writer, a creative writer or a painter, you know, somebody with, that's what I think about when I think of creativity, but there's so many other ways to be creative and things that, things that, that any of us can do. So, in, because I've always thought of myself, oh, I'm not a creative person. Well, that's not true. And so why on earth would I be saying that? you know, those thoughts that you ask yourself and you're saying, oh, why am I not creative? Oh, I'm not a creative person. That's not true, right? And I think that if you, and I think if other people tell you, oh, you're creative or, oh, you're not creative. I think that um, has a big impact on, on people. But I love the idea of creativity giving us more solutions. Yeah, I love when a problem comes up because it gives me a chance to be creative. And to think, boy, how could we fix this? You know, and I know Cheryl, yeah. you're obsessed with helping women go from fine to fabulous. And women come Absolutely. to you all the time with this problem or that problem or that problem. And sometimes there's problems we've never even heard of before. Actually, we get those yeah. often. <laughs> but we have to be the people that, that get creative, you know, to come sure. up with some solutions that are outside the box that they can't right. even see. And we, yeah. So it, it's, you know, it, I love that. I love that uh, when you turn to creativity, you can come up with a whole bunch of new solutions to a, a problem that that's uh, stumping some people. Well, and I think that's why it's so important to have a coach um, or a community that you are in that is there to support you and help you because they can see things that you can't. I love having you, Paul, to chat with and talk, talk, um, talk through things because you see things and have experienced things that I just can't even see right? Because I'm in the middle of it. And I, and I always say that. And so do you, it's, um, you know, you're in the middle of the forest and you can't see through the trees, right? Because you're in the middle of it. Um, and it's the same way with any time we've got a struggle or a problem to get the solution. You more than likely need to turn to someone, a coach or a community for that help. And they can see things that you can't. Yeah, absolutely. You know, our conversations are I mean the world to me because it's you're, you're in your own head. You're trying to come up with figure things out. It's kind of foggy. But when you bring it out on, into the open and, and talk with another person, it, the clarity is just amazing that you get. Another thing, Cheryl, though, that I do, we both do every single day. I know part of the magic morning. And that's I'm like right now, seriously, I think it's the most important 10 minutes of my whole day is the 10 minutes I spend journaling. Because I start yeah. writing things down and like the past like 10 days or so has been just a crazy, the things I'm writing down that I'm like, oh my gosh, because, but I would have never thought of that had I not put pen to paper or yeah. Cheryl and I like to use this thing called the remarkable, which is an electronic writing pad, but whatever you're doing, it's just set a timer, 10 minutes, start writing. And if you don't know what to write, the three best questions they ask yourself are what's going great. What am I grateful for? You know, so putting those things down, what's not going so great, make two or three of those things that are going on and what changes am I going to make today to make things better? That's a, that's a great journal. But 
whenever you have like a question or a problem and you can't figure out the answer, get out some paper and pen and just start writing because it'll come out and it, it just helps sort out your thoughts and, and helps you become more creative. Yeah. And I love, and John also, you know, as you mentioned, encourage ideas from other people who are great, you know, so we're, I know both of us, we're never going to come up with all the great ideas. So we pull them from people, you know, from our audience and from other great leaders um, because we want um, great ideas. I mean, we, we you know, and they're not going to all, we, we understand they're not going to all come from us. Another topic that, that, that yeah. John broke, brought up, Cheryl, which I know Miss <laughs> All-Inclusive over there <laughs> was a little uh, turned off by, um, but this whole, now, of course, we want to treat people with respect. We respect everybody. I think everyone is a 10 on their head. Everyone's of, of value. But does that mean I need to spend the uh, same amount of time with everybody? No. Okay, we're not treating everyone he, the same. Well, that's right. But guess what? Um, the way it was explained, absolutely right. Absolutely right. And I love the whole sports thing. People, Michael Jordan wasn't treated the same way as, you know, somebody else on the team. And let me tell you, I doubt Tom Brady's treated the same way either. Right. And so, and so I totally get it. And I understand. And I think that's absolutely right. I think it's absolutely right. And let me tell you, kids in general, you know, because now they give the little trophy for, you know, if you step your foot on one foot on the field, you get a trophy. Um, and let me tell you, my kids hate that. And I've talked to so many other kids that we didn't win. Why do I have a trophy? I don't want a trophy. And they throw the trophy away because they understand, even as children, that you don't deserve a trophy. You deserve a trophy when you win. Right. Not because you showed up not because you got out of bed, not because you're not playing on a video game, right? It's because you win. That's why you get that. And I love that my kids are like that. I never said anything to them. I don't really like it myself, but I never said anything to them, but they automatically understood that and get it. And I think kids do get that and understand that. So I, I yeah. love that. And I love that we're talking about it. I mean, we, we, we talked about, um, in, you know, the law of, um, a law of pain that was we did that maybe four or five yeah. weeks ago you know where you do you you grow from bad experiences like it's hard to grow from a good experience you know well you don't yeah you, you really don't it's sure fun it's sure fun but you're right you don't grow from it yeah absolutely all right Cheryl let's go into our five closing thoughts here as we wrap up this podcast what is number one? Oh my gosh have a beginner's mindset yeah, and this I is this is amazing from John. This is a guy, yeah, I would say is the smartest person I've met ever met in my life, and he's yeah. always going in every situation, pretending he doesn't know anything. Yeah, on purpose so that he can keep his cup empty. I mean, we talk about you know, and there's so many people we meet Cheryl every day that their cup is full. They know everything yeah. already. Oh, I don't need to go to that thing. I don't need to watch, listen to that podcast or that or that or that because I I already know it all. Yeah. You don't know, you don't know Jack is what, you know, is, is what, <laughs> what the truth is. So having that beginner's mindset is critically important. Yeah. And, and I love how he says, um, believe that everybody knows something that you don't. Yeah. Right. And that's very true. Because they do. You know, oh, absolutely. And even on the same topic, even on the same topic, that you think, oh, I know so much about that or whatever. Every, someone knows something that you don't. And I love that mindset. Yeah. Yep. Number two, learn something new every day. Yeah. Yes. This is great. I love that I just too. have that curiosity of, of I got to learn something new today. And sometimes we, Cheryl and I go into the day and we don't even know what that is, but we have a book that we're reading or a podcast we're listening to or a video or watch something that we're, we're on a series of something and we're learning something. And Cheryl and I call this, this topic plus a plus one. So What's your, so when we say, what's your plus one for today? It's just one sentence. What did I learn today is what we're asking you. Yeah. Instead of asking, what did you learn today? What's your plus one? Because I added one yes. thing to my life. I learned that blank. And it could come from a book you read, a, a, something you heard, a situation you're in, whatever. But every day, boy, if you can write down your plus one every day, 
because you know they say you learn something new every day, which is true. You just we just don't pay yeah. attention to it. So it's a great That's habit right, that I've right. got into with my plus one every day. Yeah, you, you can do the next one, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Make failure your friend. And oh, uh, no, hell, yeah, hell. I love this one because I would have to yeah. say the biggest shift in my mindset uh, over the past year mm -hmm. is that everything's a learning experience. It's the meaning I give to things now. And, I, and I've right. caught myself in situations before where I would have had it mean something else, something bad. But now I, I was, I've gotten to a place now where I can honestly say that everything that happens to me, even if it's super bad, if it were a massive failure, hey, that was a great learning experience. What did I learn from yeah. that? Because I love learning. I love being curious. So now I get curious about the failure. Well, why did that happen? And I, right. you know, I get obsessed. I mean, like 16 hours later, I'm still working on why this happened, but I figure it out and then it doesn't happen again. So, um, right. you know, I love, I, I believe in this a thousand percent that you failure should be your friend because, you know, as I mentioned, look at everything as being a learning experience. Yeah, I love that. And that's the only way that you can grow. And so obviously we have to make failure our friend. Now, listen, Paul, the next one. <laughs> the next one goes against like when I even read it I'm like what like it goes against everything that that I want to do I guess you know it goes against everything um and the, and so I have to tell you what it is it's be comfortable being uncomfortable and that's hard for all of us do you but think you do that Cheryl like if um yeah, I think I've gotten much, much better at being comfortable, being uncomfortable. And I'm willing because I'm aware now. Oh, well, one of the things I need to do um, to grow and to be a better person and to um, be the type of person that can help other people, I understand that I need to be uncomfortable and I need to do the things I don't want to do. And I need to do the things I don't like to do. And I need to be okay with that. And so, yes, absolutely. I think I've gotten like so much better at it just because I'm aware that it's something that makes me a better person. And I want to be a better person so that I can help other women, you know, move from where they're at to where they want to be. So I'm willing to do it. Yeah. Well, I've had a, a and then, and I do really believe that you, you are, you know, you, um, among all the people I know, are, are comfortable being uncomfortable. Um, yeah. Because because certainty's never been a super high need of yours. You know, it's it's, right. it's okay to to be uncertain there and have the variety in your life. Um, but for me, like I really looked at myself or look at myself as someone who's really good at a lot of things. So <laughs> recently, as I mentioned to you, I took up the game of golf. Oh which is very uncomfortable because I don't even, I didn't even know how to hold the club. I mean, I knew nothing. I've never even <laughs> swung a, a, I went to putt putt a couple of times, but I never actually swung a golf club in my entire life, 49 years old. Um, so when I'm out on the range and got on the course a couple of times, when I say I'm uncomfortable, <laughs> uh, it's, it's the understatement of the year. So I, but I have to, you know, tell myself that I'm, Listen, I, I'm sure everyone on day one is horrible. Oh, oh my gosh. So, no, you know, well, I, so I, I had everybody to... is uncomfortable in golf on day 1001. Yeah. So just get ready. You're just really having a I know. I just watched a tournament this weekend learning. on TV, and the guy took like a seven on a hole. I'm like, if he took a seven, I'm going to take like a 70 on that hole, you know? So yeah. uh, it happens to the best of the best still, you know, but it's, it's, it's getting, being comfortable even when you're uncomfortable. But it's willing to do it. It's, yeah. it. it's that you're willing to do it. That is the point. And that's the point I want to make. Look, be aware that that's what you have to do. And then be willing to do it. Yeah. Because if you're willing to do that and step out of the comfort zone, which isn't easy for anyone, but, but just do it, like run out. Like, I think it's great to blast out of it, you know, blast out of the comfort zone. Yeah. And really embrace being uncomfortable. Embrace a bad picture. Embrace things that you wouldn't normally do. And I love to do something like that, Paul, every single day. Embrace well, something. I, I know you told me some stories recently about 
tennis. So ter- Cheryl's moving up the tennis ranks here. Oh, She's almost oh, almost oh, on the pro God. level now. No, um, oh my land. But yeah, you yeah, know, she you was like your golf. You are too. Something you said to me about tennis, like um, because she plays you play doubles, and yeah. uh, you just didn't you like I didn't understand the complexity of of doubles or something you said uh, uh, to no. that point. No, I have no idea. I had no idea that there's like um, the strategy. Okay. Right. I'm like, my strategy is get the dang ball over the net. Thank you. <laughs> okay. But I come to find out, Paul, there's a bit more there's to, more it, to it. Okay. There is more to it, like a million things more to it. Right. And so, yeah. And so it's just understanding though and being aware and then stepping in to uncomfortable, yeah. like with a flourish. That's what I like to say with the flourish. <laughs> I'm stepping in fabulous. That's what I swear. Why I step into the uncomfortable. Why not? Own it. <laughs> Own that. Own that uncomfortability. <laughs> yeah. So good. Yes. Uh, and last but not least, as we mentioned numerous times in this podcast, keep asking questions, you know, and it's always going to lead to a good idea. And good ideas are what spark everything in life. So that's is yeah. the real the real message here is to keep asking those questions. And be open to them, right? Be open yeah. to the answer that you may receive. I love that be open because I think that's really, really important. And, and you do that by not believing that you know everything. <laughs> Absolutely. That's where it right? all starts. But yeah. when you ask questions or just when you ask why, don't just stop at the first answer. I know everybody right. stops. Oh, that's because of this. Well, why is that? You know, you get back to that two-year-old mentality and that's how you you discover things in your life and, and really make some breakthroughs is when you start continue to ask why and dig, dig, dig deeper into the core reasons for things. Yes. Awesome. Oh awesome. God, awesome. Paul, Great podcast, so Cheryl. Fun. I love this topic. And uh, we have some topics that we're going to branch off um, on, on in, just from this, especially the, the uh, confident one, the con- self-confidence. Uh, we're going to do an entire Woo. podcast just on that alone. So there's some great material yeah. here. So I hope you got some value from this. If you did, please make a comment below. The notes are below. So you just click on the link and I'll take you to the notes and um, you can read those over. And um, we will be back next week to elevate your leadership. Um, and we're going to be doing the next law. So if you've got the book, The 15 Laws of Growth, continue to read that with us. And uh, we'll discuss the next chapter next week, Cheryl. Yay. Thank you, Paul. That was so much fun. Absolutely. See you next week, everyone.